A film in three minutes, Agnus Dei, Hungary, 1919, a land in turmoil. Revolution is met with counter-revolution, brother turned against brother, all while the creeping shadow of a far more sinister force begins ever so slowly to make itself felt. If only there was a visionary filmmaker who could exploit this cinematic historical canvas, someone whose work often turns the hideous and barbaric into something beautiful replete with symbolism and a stunning visual approach without equal. Someone like, perhaps, Hungarian master Miklos Jancsó and his 1971 arthouse masterstroke Agnus Dei. A mesmerizing feast for the eyes, with cinematography so meticulously crafted, it's easy to see why Martin Scorsese refers to its director as the master of the long shot. Set in an unnamed rural farm which symbolically represents the broader Hungarian landscape, Agnus Dei or Egi Barani's plot revolves around the suppression of the 1919 Hungarian Revolution after the First World War, an event which would gradually lead to the rise of ultra-nationalism and eventual fascism within the country. But instead of a play-by-play -play history of said event, Jancho presents various societal forces, from socialists, monarchists, and most notably the Catholic Church as distinct characters, with the church personified by a fanatical priest whose early release by a group of revolutionary leftists eventually leads to a greater massacre after the church joins forces with reactionary conservatives, a message Yancho's Soviet censors would no doubt have encouraged. But historical interpretation aside, it's the dazzling presentation of Agnus Dei's narrative that leaves the most lasting impression, with takes running upwards of five minutes minutes, pushing the physical limits of what film cameras from the time could achieve. And the shots themselves are never static or dull. We sweep across this isolated world like a silent angel, quietly observing and marvelling at the sheer complexity of the choreography the many actors, extras and dozens of horses perform with perfect precision, all magnificently photographed by frequent Yancho collaborator Janos Kender. Every time there is a cut, you feel its impact. The cut here matters more, as if each scene is a moment in history that has now been interrupted by a new blood-soaked chapter. The lack of diegetic sound in places, and the implied rather than overt violence, adds to the surrealism of this insular landscape. A bloodland, where suppression begets suppression, and where artists must use metaphor and allegory to express their own suffering in their own troubled times. Whether it be 1919, Yancho in 1971, or this very moment.